Welcome to Hoya, healthy, organic, inspired Asian food and cooking. I'm Diane Yang Kirk, and today we're going to be making a healthy and delicious Korean style bibimbap. Generally, it's made with beef, but today we're going to be making a version with chicken, and for you vegans out there, a tofu and portobello mushroom version. It's so yummy. Let's get started. Bibimbap in Korean means mixed rice. So what this dish is is really a bunch of individually sautéed vegetables, both hot and cold, meats, and even tofu, which are then placed separately around brown rice in a wheel of deliciousness. So while this dish isn't complicated, it definitely has a lot of steps to it. I love all the vegetables that go into it because they're so full and uh, the colors are so great uh, that. It's just fun to eat because you kind of get to have a little this and a little that. Right now I'm peeling some carrots and I'm going to julienne them. I'm going to do long angular slices. So now I'm slicing one more time into as much of a matchstick as possible. I love mushrooms, so I'm actually choosing two different kinds of mushrooms, actually three for the vegetarian version, but to start right now, some shiitake mushrooms and also some button mushrooms, button mushrooms. You're just gonna slice them through. I've chosen yellow zucchini because this is what was on sale. You can of course find green squash, green, green zucchini, whatever it is that you want. Green scallion. Just giving it a little bit of a roll while I slice it. So instead of being just a standard cut, it ends up being a really nice side angular cut. And we have spinach. Bagged spinach is fine. I'm just gonna take the stems off of these so that you just have the beautiful leaves. I'm gonna slice the cucumber in half one more time, just like the squash. And I'm going to use my mandolin. And now we're on to the meats. First, we're going to slice up some beef. The beef that I bought is already pre-sliced, but if you can ask your butcher to help you with it, or if you just slice it very thinly yourself, then you'll be good. And I'm just going to slice them into smaller pieces. What you're looking for are thin slices. Once the beef is sliced, we're going to marinate it. But before we do that, we're going to slice up the chicken. On an angle, you want to cut against the grain. These are chicken tenders, and they will be tender. I love garlic, but instead of chopping it, I sometimes like to cheat. After I take the peel off, I'll just use the whole clove into one of these garlic presses. Even though the press's point is to take off the skin, but I use it as my handy dandy chopper. We've got the cucumbers. We're gonna marinate them because this is gonna be a cold side. Soy sauce, sesame oil, just a hint of garlic, and some salt. Just a pinch of coconut sugar. And just mix it all together. Set that aside. Now we're gonna marinate the beef and chicken. Same way, some soy sauce. Some sesame oil. Some garlic. Drop of salt. Sugar. Now we get to saute. I generally don't use a ton of sesame oil to saute or stir fry with, but in Korean food, it's used all the time. A little bit of that garlic on high temperature, and we just wanna wait for the garlic to start to sizzle. And we're gonna start with the carrots. A little bit of salt, 
and a little bit of pepper. So for the carrots, you just wanna make sure that they are just a little bit tender. So we're gonna do the same process again with the zucchini. You want this on medium to high heat. Just to give it a little color, instead of salt, I'm gonna use just a little bit of soy sauce. Mmm. This is my favorite part. When I get to smell everything cooking, you see how big the smile this is? So just like the carrots, we just wanna make sure that it's not mushy and falling apart, but that it's just a little tender. And that looks great. Some recipes might have you blanching the bean sprouts and also the spinach, but what I'm going to do is just very quickly saute. And just a drop of soy in this one as well. It might be helpful also just to add a little bit of water. You add the water so that it's not dry and it cooks down. There we go. Now the spinach. You're always going to need more spinach than you think because it cooks down. The salt helps pull out the juices and the water from the spinach leaves. Touch more salt. And just like the bean sprouts, a little bit more water. So that spinach started off in this big bowl and it was barely fitting. And now this is what we have left. Yum. Repeat again with mushrooms. Because we are making meat also, if you're a vegetarian or vegan and wanted to do this, you can replace these mushrooms or you can just cook the portobello, but that's like it's replacing the steak. So what I'm going to do is actually cook it all together, but you can totally separate it out. You can do one kind of mushroom. It doesn't really matter. portobello mushrooms because I want it to mimic the flavor of the beef or the chicken. I'm going to give it a little bit of soy and some of that sugar. Portobello mushrooms are so yummy. They are chewy and meaty and if you're not going to be eating meat, if you love meat, then this is a great option. If you've never had a portobello burger, oh my gosh, must do. This looks like it needs just a drop more oil. The portobello mushrooms take a little bit more time than the regular mushrooms just because I've sliced them a little thicker. I'm gonna pull these out now. And then just very quickly, because this is already flavored, the oil from the mushrooms, I'm going to cut in some of the choices. By browning the tofu, it just gives it a little bit more flavor. So I did all the vegetables and the tofu first. So in case you are sharing with someone who is eating meat and you're not, then you can make everyone happy. Now we've got our beef. Shredded and so yummy. I came back with a clean bowl just because I want to be able to put the beef back in. To the bowl and I didn't want to contaminate it with the pieces from the raw beef. As you can see, I switched from my wooden spoon to my tongs. Just let it cook until it has a little bit of the caramelization on the outside of the beef. It gives it a nice crispy edge and it just tastes better. You don't need garlic in this because if you remember, we already put the garlic in earlier. You see how it's starting to brown? That's what you want. And now the chicken. I'm showing both the beef and the chicken in this dish, but of course, if you're not eating beef or if you're choosing to only have chicken, then you can do that instead of beef. You'll get that same wonderful caramelization on the chicken as well because of the sugar that we added into the marinade. It smells so good in here. 
Because the chicken is sliced thin, we definitely want to make sure it's cooked all the way through, but it really only takes a couple of minutes. And if you want to be sure, pull a piece out, cut into it, and chop. All right, so now we're going to build the bibimbap. The spinach. The squash slash zucchini. The chicken. You just want to kind of alternate colors so that it looks delicious and appetizing. How about some of the yellow bean sprouts? We've got the cool cucumber. Our carrots. Our portobello mushrooms. Running out of space on this plate. Let's slide in some tofu over here. Make a little space right here. Our regular mushrooms. And where am I gonna put the beef? These scallions are not cooked, but they are delicious. I'm just gonna spread them out a little bit. Amazing oniony flavor. Oh my gosh, we're almost there. I'm gonna throw a little kimchi on the side. Some people like it spicy, some people won't, but we'll figure that uh, maybe at least half of whoever's eating will have some kimchi. Ah, what the hell, I love kimchi. We'll put it on both sides. Just one last step, I'm gonna move this. I have a fried egg to make. One-headed egg break. Depending on whether you like your egg runny or if you like it more cooked, you can decide whatever you want to do. I'm gonna have mine sunny side up. And we've got our fried egg on top. Now I'm gonna add a little seaweed. Just gives it a little extra yumminess and flavor. And then finally, some sesame seeds. Ooh. This is generally served with gochujang, which is a red pepper sauce. It is savory, it's sweet, it's spicy, and it's delicious with this. And this is a healthy and delicious Korean style bibimbap. Hoya! Welcome to Hoya. No. Hoya! Wait, <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> Healthy, organic, inspired Asian food and cooking. Is that what it's called? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> shake it out, shake it out, okay. And portobello mushroom version. Portobello mushroom. <laughs> Let's go back and do it again. If you enjoyed this episode of Hoya Food and Cooking, please like this video and share it with your friends. New videos will be going up each week on my channel, so please subscribe to see the latest delicious, healthy, organic, inspired Asian food recipes. I'd love to hear from you, so please comment below and tell me what you loved about this video, and also what dishes you'd like to see me prepare in the future. Hoya!